Hi there, it's Jim from Janku, and today I want to talk about closures in JavaScript. Let's hop over to Mozilla's definition of what a closure is, and if I just zoom in here so you can see this. Closure is a combination of a function bundled together or enclosed with its references to its surrounding state, which is the lexical environment. I think the second sentence here is actually a little more clear about what it actually does. So it's when an inner function is defined, so a function that's nested within another function, that function has access to the outer function's variables. To understand what that actually means, I think we have to have an understanding of what lexical scope is in JavaScript. So let's come over here and open up VS Codium. And let's create a new file and save this file as closures.js on the desktop. And then we can close out of this welcome screen. And let's start with a simple example of lexical scope. If we define a function here, and we call this function greeting, and this function has a variable called name. So we'll say the name is set to Jim. And if we wanted to return a greeting for this person, so we'll return hello, name. We could print a greeting to the screen. So we could console.log our greeting function here. And if we were to run this, let me go to my desktop just so I can run this file. You'll see we get hello, Jim. Now, the way that lexical scope works is if we have a variable defined outside of our function, so let's define our salutation here, and we'll say that the salutation is high. And inside this function, even though high is defined in the global scope out here, we can actually use that inside this function. So instead of hard coding hello in here, let's use the salutation that we're defining above and then let's just make sure that we add a little space here between the salutation and the name. And if I save this, and we run this, you'll see that this says, hi, Jim. So essentially, this is lexical scope. We have access to this variable, even though it's defined outside of our function here. Now, there's some debate about whether what we did here is actually a closure. So in a closure, we generally have a nested function. So we would have another function within our greeting. And that function would have access to the variables defined in the outer function. Now, some people say that since this is behaving the same way, we have this globally scoped variable here, and we're accessing it inside of a function, that this is a closure. And other people say, although it's similar, it's not technically a closure because it's not a nested function here. We can have this debate in the comments, but let's go to our dev tools to make that determination for us. So I'm gonna to go to Chromium here, start a new browser, and I'll do control shift J to open up my console. And let's do this same example here. So we'll do variable salutation equals hey. And then we'll create a function here. And we'll call our function greeting. And in our function, We'll define a new variable called name. And then we'll return the salutation plus a space plus our name variable. And then we'll save this. So now if we were to run our greeting here, and you can see Chromium's dev tools give me a little hint about what's going to be returned. We get, hey, Jim. But if we want to understand what's actually happening here, let's do a console.dir. And let's actually log what this greeting function is. So we're not going to execute it. We're just going to log what it is. And we can see that we have this function returned here. And if I were to click on this, you can see at the bottom here, I have this scope section. And if I were to click into there, I have two scopes defined. I have the script and the global. And if I were to look inside this global section, and or scroll all the way down to the S's,
you'll see we have this salutation value here. So we do have access to this value as it's showing. Now let's do a slightly different variation on this example where instead of when we define this greeting, instead of getting the salutation from the global scope here, let's return a function here and we'll call this function inner And this function will return the salutation plus the name still. But instead of defining the salutation outside of the function, let's come up here and let's actually define it within this function itself. So we'll make another variable and we'll call the salutation and we'll set this equal to yo. Now let's press enter to run this. Now that that's redefined, let's do a console dir one more time on our greeting. And let's open this up and take a look inside here. So this is still logging the greeting function. So we're going to get the same scopes that we had previously. But instead of logging this top level greeting function, if we were to run this, it will return the inner function here. So let's do a console.dir and then let's run the function and we run this console directory on the return value of the greeting, which is the function inner here. You can see now we have this inner function displayed. And if we were to expand that, you'll see we now have three scopes available. And in this scope, we actually have a new one called closure. So this seems like pretty good evidence to me that what we're creating here is now a closure. So we're getting access to the outer functions variables here, both these divine name and salutation and then we're using them in the inner function here. And this is all happening through lexical scope where a function has access to things defined outside of it. And we're demonstrating that here with the salutation and the name. Now we could rewrite this function in one more slightly different way. So instead of hard coding these name and salutation variables in the function itself, we could pass these as arguments. So let's come here and do that. So I'm gonna get rid of the name And I'm going to get rid of the salutation line here. And then in here, we're just going to create new parameters called name and salutation. And if I press enter, we can run the same console directory in here. And instead, this time, we actually have to pass a name and a salutation. And we'll still get the same thing. So in our scopes here, we still have our closure with the salutation and the name being defined here. Let's hop back to our code editor and demonstrate this in a different way. So I'm going to get rid of all this information here. So one of the benefits of closures is data privacy. Now, JavaScript doesn't have a built-in private method, but you can simulate this behavior using closures. So let's take a look at doing something like that. Let's say that we have a variable here called my bank, and this variable equals a function. In this function, we have a variable called balance. And we'll set our initial bank balance to $500. And then we'll return a series of closures here. So the first one we're going to call deposit. And deposit is going to be a function that takes an amount parameter. And then let's just define a withdraw function here. So we'll call this withdraw. And this function will take an amount parameter. And then let's define one last get balance function here. And this won't take any arguments, it will just return the current balance. The get balance function is easy. This is just going to simply return the balance variable, which we defined up here. And now for these other two functions, we're going to create a new method here, which is just going to be a function that we'll call 
update balance. And this will take an amount here. And then we'll just take our existing balance variable here and we'll add the amount to it here. Now, this gets a little tricky because we have some scenarios where we're adding to our balance and some scenarios where we're taking money away from our balance. So let's take a look at how to do that. So if we have this deposit function here, we can call our update balance method and we can pass an always positive representation of our balance. We can accomplish that with the math dot abs of our amount here. Now this will always be a positive amount, even if someone enters a negative number here. And we can do something similar here with our withdraw. And we could just say negative math abs. So even if somebody were to put in an already negative amount, it would still return a negative number here instead of accidentally going positive. And we just want to have this little fail safe so someone's not going through our withdraw method and actually adding money to our account, or more likely, they're going through our deposit method and actually taking money out of the account. So let's just save that. If we come down here, we can run a couple different scenarios. And let's just first make this function self-calling. So if I come here and I wrap this function like this, it's calling itself and then if I come down here, now if I run a console log here of my bank and I do the get balance method and save this, I get my balance of 500 here. Okay, so let's copy this and do some other things with it. Let's get our initial balance there, and then let's deposit, say, 200 more dollars. And then let's get our balance again. Save that, come down, and you'll see we have undefined here. So we didn't really need to console.log our depositing. We're not actually returning anything there. So let's just come here and let's get rid of the console log. So we add $200 and it be, our balance becomes 700. And then let's just try withdrawing. So we'll do the withdraw method. Withdraw. And we'll say $100. And then let's log our balance one more time. So we start with 500 here, hard coded in there. And then we add $200 to it, so we get to $700. And after this withdrawal of $100, we should be back down to $600. So let's just save this and run this. Okay, so 500, 700, 600. Great, that all looks like it's working. And let's even try tricking our system here. So let's try to deposit negative $200. Save it. And let's run this again. So you still see that we have the same amount. So even though we tried to trick the system by depositing negative $200, this right here, this math abs, is going to make sure that this is a positive number. And the same thing here, if we try to withdraw negative $100 and save it, if we run this, it's still the same amount. So this is always still going to give us the negative $100 withdrawal amount. Now the cool part about this is the balance and the update function here are private. So we can't actually get at these from outside our return values here. So now if we just come in here and we grab our my bank, and if we try to just update the balance here, and let's pass our own amount, we'll say 800. And we were to run this. You see we get an error. So it says my bank .update balance is not a function. So we can't access that directly. Similar if we came in here and we tried to just get our balance here. Save that. Oh, let's try to console log this. And save that. We'll see that this is undefined as well. So that allows us to have these private properties and methods here. 
and then we can set an API that users have to interact with in order to get at those values, in order to check their balance, or to add money to the balance, or to take money out of the balance. Hopefully that was a helpful intro to closures for you, and I hope you understand some of the basics of how to use them now. I hope you understand some of the real world applications of where these are helpful to use in JavaScript. And if you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. We love to hear from you. Or if you have other types of content that you want us to cover in the future, let us know by commenting. Thanks so much for watching and we'll be in touch soon. Take care.